So there's a lot that Shane Dawson is going to be able to learn from Jeffree Star throughout this series. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the importance of mentors and also will Jeffree Star turn Shane Dawson into a psychopath? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them. And I am covering the entire beautiful world of Jeffree Star series from Shane Dawson. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. So those of you who haven't been here before, uh, I have been donating 20% of ad revenue to various charities, trying to tie them in with the topic of the video, and things like that. Anyways, for this video, I chose the Trevor Project. So be sure to share this video. 20% of the ad revenue will go straight to the Trevor Project and down in the description, down in the pinned comment below. I will also be providing a direct donation link if you would like to donate to them directly, all right? But yeah, anyways, in this first episode of The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star, there was something really interesting that popped up and I'm like, this is a great, great, great topic uh, when Shane was uh, talking with Ryland about things that he'll learn from Jeffree Star. Like, I'm so, like, if, there, if I was on that list, I would be like, in like the bottom thousand. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, but a lot of people think that you are doing well and you are doing well. You're just not doing Jeffrey well. <laughs> I own a merchandise company. I print, manufacture everything myself. So I have about 10 businesses that, I, that I'm currently running besides my brand, which is the giant cosmetics company. So I'm constantly doing shit and people just don't really know about it. I don't talk about it because I don't think it's exciting. I don't think people are gonna want to watch or see it. Uh, that's everything. What are you talking about? I do, but I do want to like try. I want this series, but also this year. Like I want to be smarter about this shit and I want to know more about business, like making a product, learning about the business side and... Mm -hmm. Anxiety the house. I just don't know what that business is. I don't know how to make money like that. Like this is one of the most important things that I, I just wish everybody would understand. And that is find yourself a mentor, all right? If you like uh, reading, um, Russell Brand came out with an amazing book earlier this year called Mentors. And he talks about the importance of mentors. And I can really relate to Russell Brand because I too am a recovering addict. I've been clean for seven years. And we're taught that in uh, various recovery programs and things like that. But Shane Dawson talking about, you know, not being that great with money and, you know, Shane Dawson hasn't really ran a business before. He's written books and, you know, he sells merch and things like that. But there's a lot that he can learn from Jeffree Star. And just here is just one of the one of the most important things that I learned. Like, if there's somewhere that you wanna be, like you wanna go, learn from someone who's already there or who has been there. Like, no matter what it is in your life. Like, for example, me, like I have a variety of mentors. I have mentors who help me with YouTube and I get to talk with them about that stuff. I have mentors who are writers and have written books so I could talk to them about those things. I have, you know, mentors, you know, for my recovery and for my mental health and just everything that you could think of. Also, I'm terrible with money too, <laughs> kind of like Shane Dawson. So I have mentors who have helped me become a little bit more financially responsible, all right? And part of this requires like humility and recognizing like we don't know everything. And the best thing that we could do is find somebody who does understand this, all right? One of the best things about mentors that I learned when I first got sober is they are free, all right? So anyways, um, therapy is a great option. Like I have a therapist as well, but there's only so much a therapist can help me with. So if you can afford therapy, get therapy, all right? But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have mentors as well because a major part of improving our mental and emotional well-being is having a support group. But a great example of this is when I first got sober, I had no money, no health insurance, nothing. I didn't get sober through a rehab like many people are able to do. So I had to find a lot of uh, mentors 
in my recovery programs who knew how to stay sober, knew how to be happy and get their life back together. I had to learn from those people. So like, I, I know I get a lot of messages, DMs, comments and things like that. Like, but Chris, I can't afford therapy. Find people who are where you want to be and start talking to them. Like sometimes you literally just ask them like, will you be my mentor? You know what I mean? And like, it doesn't have to be like on a career path. Like if there's somebody who is just happier than you are and you're trying to figure that out, like how is this person so happy, so serene, so tranquil? Like reach out to them and talk to them and say, how do you do this? Another great option too, if you're low on money is something that I've been really diving into the past few years, which is books. Right? Like some of the greatest wisdom throughout the history of mankind is documented in books. All right. So if you have that kind of like social anxiety and you're not, you know, up to like reaching out to people, you just don't know anybody who might make a good mentor, like pick up some books. Now, some of you are probably wondering about the title of this video. So yeah, will Jeffree Star turn Shane Dawson into a psychopath? So another one of the great books I just finished reading was The Psychopath Test by John Ronson, all right? And he's an amazing author, I love that dude. Um, the first book of his I read was So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Those of you who know me, that was very relatable. <laughs> but anyways, The Psychopath Test is a great book, but it, it has these kind of twists and turns. Like first he goes in just kind of trying to learn more about psychopaths, but then he starts to figure out that, you know, there's a difference between like being a pure psychopath and having psychopathic tendencies, all right? So before anybody jumps down my throat and says, oh, you're diagnosing Jeffree Star. No, there are things like tendencies. Logan Paul even talked about it during uh, Shane Dawson's series with Jake Paul. But a lot of us have tendencies, right? A lot of us have psychopathic tendencies or narcissistic tendencies and all these other things. And sometimes there are benefits to turning them on and off. So. Let's talk about this, for example. Like, there are many, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, CEOs who have psychopathic tendencies and that's what's helped make them successful. But what I'll talk about in a second is about how it all comes down to balance. So when you're looking at people like Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, so Shane Dawson is on this kind of journey to figure out how to start, you know, uh, you know, working in the makeup business and, you know, there's kind of, um, already been some talk about how ruthless it can be and like we've seen previews for the upcoming episodes and everything like that. And anybody who follows Shane Dawson, and this is something that came up when he was uh, making videos with Katie Morton is, Shane Dawson is an empath. He feels a lot of what the other people feel, right? So what you're having with Jeffree Star is this kind of balance because Jeffree Star, in order to be successful, he has to be able to detach himself a little bit from those emotions. And that does not make you a bad person because there are many times where having psychopathic tendencies does benefit you and it benefits others as well. Here's a great example. So something they talk about in the Psychopath Test book is like uh, a dentist, right? A dentist who needs to disconnect himself emotionally, right? When he's like doing dental procedures on people. Another prime example is my son was born via emergency C-section and now he's this healthy young man of 10 years old. And like, I think about this in professions where you need to have psychopathic tendencies when you perform certain jobs, like, Think about if the doctor who performed the C-section to save my son's life, if he was like cutting into my son's mom, just like, oh my God, I feel so bad for cutting into her and oh, right? He has to be able to detach himself emotionally from that. So looking at Jeffree Star, like, and just, business people who have to do that. Um, I just finished this amazing book. I've been waiting for months for it to come out. It's called Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. And by the way, I'll link all these books out in the description below if you wanna check them out. But anyways, he talks about in this book, like one of the chapters is about learning to say no and not giving up too much of yourself. So the dude who started American Apparel, like that whole company went out of business because this guy gave too much of himself. He wasn't able to detach himself emotionally and say no in certain situations. So something they talk about in the book is that he gave everybody his cell phone number and everything like that. And when the company was smaller, that was something he could manage. But as the company grew and grew and grew and grew and grew, he was giving way too much of himself. 
And I can relate to that, especially with being too emotionally invested. So like I said, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. When my addiction first kicked off, I was a service advisor at a car dealership. And I was so emotionally attached to everything that I did that it led to me being absolutely miserable and drinking myself into blackouts every single night because customers would come in with their broken cars. Some of them were traveling. Some of them didn't have the money to fix their cars. Sometimes the technician would mess up their cars. Sometimes parts would get ordered incorrectly and everything like that. And I felt so much and so bad that I would go home and just drink myself stupid because I was so emotionally invested invested in everything. And again, like I said, this doesn't mean you have to just stop caring, but a skill that we can develop is learning when to balance that emotion. Um, the last example I'll give you um, is after I got sober, I was working at a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years. And I developed a lot of relationships, you know, just uh, helping clients on their path of recovery. And, you know, while they were in treatment, because I was running groups and doing one-on-ones and everything like that, and I dealt with a lot of death. There were over 70 deaths in the three years that I worked there. And sometimes I would get a call or a text or a message that someone just died. And it was like right before I had to go in and do a group in front of 50, 60 clients, right? And if my emotions got the best of me, I would not be able to be of service to the clients I was about to go help. You see what I mean? So I was able to learn how to detach myself from those emotions and kind of even shift those into motivation to help people. Like anytime I got a call that someone had relapsed or passed away, it motivated me to do that next group even better to try to help these people, right? And thank God for my support group because I didn't just stuff those emotions down. Like we have to feel these things. It's just sometimes there's a time and a place for them. You know what I mean? But thank God, like after work and everything like that, like I was able to turn to my amazing support group, my mentors and everything like that who had been through this before and they were able to help me out emotionally. So I hope that makes sense and finding that balance. So I, I hope we see during this journey with uh, Shane Dawson being mentored by Jeffree Star, like I think we've already seen it in some of the previews where Shane Dawson is going to have to learn to become a little bit, a little bit more of a, a badass, you know what I mean, in order to survive in this industry. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Remember, don't forget, share this video. 20% of all of the ad revenue is going to The Trevor Project. And there's a link down in the description and in the pinned comment below if you would like to donate to The Trevor Project directly. All right, and Shane Dawson's next video is coming out Friday and I will be doing some breakdowns and recaps of that too. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And I wanna send out a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether it be on Patreon, buying my books or merch or whatever it is, you are all amazing. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.